available on Facebook too. You can if you want. We're we're starting to stream now, so it's possible they can even see us now. It's very strange the way that it works. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Here we go. I don't even have to. See, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is talk to me. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> All right. I think we're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Aligned as Fuck. No, I did not just say a bad word on Saturday. Um. So anyway, welcome. My name is Laura Mazzotta. I'm sure you know that already. And I'm an Akashic therapist, which means I've been a therapist for almost 20 years and also an Akashic healer and teacher. And it's really my mission to assist people with getting the deepest form of healing as quickly as possible. And I'm here with Vienna Costanzo. Did I pronounce your last name right? Yes, you did. Look at me, see? And she's also a therapist local to me. We're close by. We even met at Starbucks. It's so fun. Good. That was great. Yeah, and we're both on the spiritual path. So we are here today because there's some jamming stuff to be talking about with all of you about how to stay centered, how to be empowered, how to feel excited on a more consistent basis in your life, okay? So Vienna's a licensed mental health counselor. Like I said, she's near me in New York here. We're about a little over an hour north of New York City. And she specializes in spirituality. So she helps individuals overcome limiting beliefs so that they can really heal from their past and they can remain present and create the future they desire. So you got the past, you got the present, you got the future with Vienna, which is amazing. So thank you so much for being here, honey. Thank you for having me. Of course, this is so fun. So yeah, so we are rock star friends when we get together and we thought we'd share some of that energy with you. I'm actually going to open up the, the video here just to make sure that I'm not going to miss any of your comments because we all know how Facebook is with comments on a regular basis. So let me just do that really quickly. And Vienna, do you want to start talking about how you center yourself? Yes. I was cool. hoping you asked that. That's so funny. Oh yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> like if I could think of any question for her to ask, maybe it would be that. Oh, there you go. Well done. <laughs> so how do I center myself? Well, of course, just taking a deep breath helps. Mm. Um, depending on the situation, if I'm super foggy or if there's like a lot of people around me, a lot of distractions and feeling really overwhelmed, I know when it's time for a break and I just need to like walk away and take some deep breaths. Um, and sometimes if I wanna tap into my intuition, like I'll just like tap my third eye to just like wake myself up a little bit. Mm. And then I'll put my hands at heart center, like literally to center yeah and I like press my middle fingers together like just so like everything is completely centered um mm. and walking in nature is probably my biggest one yeah I love the idea of like pressing being really conscious of pressing your fingers together I actually really really like that because yeah. you guys might think that it's really simple but that's actually an incredibly helpful strategy to to encourage mindfulness really, right? Like you're focusing, you're really focusing on what you're doing and like how things are positioned and you're using your physical body. You know, we are human beings and we're dealing with the spiritual, which is intangible, unseen, right? And so it's nice to have something that we feel we can hold on to, to kind of anchor ourselves when we enter into that spiritual space. Mm. You know, let us know in the comments too, if any of you, hi, Tony Ann, how are you? Hi, Deborah. Good to see you, honey. Sherry and Marcella. Marcella just jumped on quickly. She just wanted to say that she loves both of us Hi, and Marcella. she's going to watch. <laughs> she's going to watch the replay. She has something to do right now. Oh, a call right now. So anyway, Aww. but thank you for jumping on Marcella. We love you. So, uh, so let us know if there's anything that you do in particular. Hi, Diane. Good to see you to, to center yourself. Right. And one of the things I wanted to mention too, with when Vienna was talking was, you know, it truly is that simple to recenter yourself after you have practiced it some, because I know that if somebody had told me when I was like first starting this path and I was super anxious and they were like, Oh, take a deep breath and then try this and then try that. I'd be like, okay, but I'd still be like, you know, right. <laughs> it'd be hard for me to get out of it. And so sometimes for me, what I find is helpful 
is when I'm my mind's running or I'm restless or I'm anxious or I'm just in kind of an agitated state, I find that it's easier for me to do something physical first before mm -hmm. I center. So that could be tapping. It could be, like you said, walking in nature. That's perfect because you're grounding and you're looking around at all the pretty things and, mm -hmm. you know, and you're moving your body. Mm -hmm. And so any of that stagnant energy or that resistance that comes up is going to be released and also assisted by the mother earth energy being outside. So that's just one note I would want to share with some of you too, who are like, yeah, well, that's great for you, but I'm swimming in anxiety and I I've been there too. Mm -hmm. And so honestly, it just requires a, a bigger commitment to yourself. Right. Is yeah. And, and that can be hard to do, especially if you have self-worth issues and feel like I don't deserve this amount of time, even if you're not thinking that consciously, you know, if you're really not sticking with it and you're really not doing it, then you need to look at, do I just feel like I don't deserve it? Do I feel like I don't love myself enough? Right. You know, mm -hmm. to do this. So what would you say to somebody if, you know, they were, you were giving them these suggestions and they were like, I just can't do it. Like, what are other suggestions that you would recommend? Hmm. Well, I mean, I always tell people if they're interested in meditation, for example, um, you only need three minutes. That's it. Just three minutes. And there's so many apps out there where you can be guided through meditation because it's, pretty much near impossible to just empty your mind of all thoughts, mm -hmm. especially Laura, I was going to say before, when you said like, you like to get movement in first, I need to do that too. It's like, I kind of need my body to like match my crazy monkey yeah. mind, you exactly. know, like, and like move around. So maybe I'll like dance first and do some yoga and then sit and meditate. Or sometimes I just, I don't even feel like meditating and just like, dancing is probably one of my favorite ways to center myself too like and just like being present with my body um which i know a lot of people have a hard time with as well but like yeah. like anything to get you in the moment is good enough you don't even have to do the meditation thing like just focus on the sounds of the music that you're listening to um focus on the words like close your eyes and just like listen to where your body wants to go and just move. And that could be a way to center yourself too. And like, I mean, I'm thinking of all these things now, but um, yeah. you know, like grounding yourself is a good way. So even while you're dancing, like maybe you want to like stomp your feet and like mm -hmm. get yourself grounded and like feel what your feet and your toes feel like on the carpet or the grass or wherever you're at so like it doesn't even have to be meditation you can make it fun and do just be present in what you love doing i really love that so much where you were talking about like just let your body go where it wants to right mm -hmm. i think that is one of the best ways that we can enhance our intuition honestly just listening to our bodies in the moment like this morning was rock star because I just listen to my body every single step of the morning. And I feel like I feel fabulous. And, and the more that we do that, even, and, and honestly, it wasn't like dancing or walking or anything. It was just like, Oh, I feel like going to water my plants or I feel like pruning my plants, but I just allowed my body to take me wherever it wanted to go. And then I'd end up in like a room in my house and I'd be like, what am I doing here? Like, <laughs> why did you bring me here body? And then I'm like, oh, I need to water my plants and let me do that. And, you know, so I think just allowing ourselves to listen and this can include, you know, what you might want to eat that day or what kind of drink you want to have or how much sleep you decide to get, you know, mm -hmm. whether you take a bath or a shower. So it doesn't just have to be kind of walking through life and going through your day and task oriented things or, you know, exercise like we were talking about before but i guess okay so one of my questions that came up after as you were talking was like how would you define centered and i would love for you guys to to tell us too that are live with us hi layla so good to see you honey let us know you know what does centered mean to you like what does it feel like what does it look like what is like what does that word even mean so what are your thoughts on that vienna for me centered means present and focused and calm mm. and like I can't help but use this word like aligned with <laughs> my authentic <Yeah>. self 
<laughs> because I don't know, I'm, I'm going slightly off topic, but I noticed with myself as a people pleaser still working on that. Um, when I'm with a crowd of people, I am realizing like, I'm not even fully present in my own body. I'm just like automatically trying to people please or like mimicking their behaviors. It's just like automatic. And I know that, I mean, people do this in social situations, but sometimes yeah. again, I have to walk away and I'm like, whoa, I am like not even present. So mm -hmm. it's just like making sure that I don't know, let's say, I don't know, like people are being super loud and like, that's not the vibe that I want to feel, but I'm only doing that to kind of like go along with it and please them. Like, I want to make sure that I remain within myself. I'm still speaking my truth, not just going along with what they're doing and saying. Mm. So that was a long-winded answer as per usual. No, I love that. Cause it is <laughs> it's like part of that being centered is just being really true to who you are at the core. Right. Yes. So for me, I think centered is, and hi, Jenna, I love you, is not being preoccupied. Cause like when you said you, when you realize you're not present, that's what happens to me. Like I'll be playing a game with my kids or I'll be doing something with my kids or I'll be doing something around the house or whatever. And I realize that although I'm doing it, I can feel a little bit like a robot because really my mind is focused somewhere else. Like I'm doing the task, but I'm not invested in the task. I'm not present with the task. Right. Whereas it's so funny because I was just like recording some chanting before we got on here and I was so present with it. And I was even when I was like snuggling with my plants this morning, I was so present with my plants mm -hmm. and just everything that I did today, I was very present with. And I think that a lot of the times that's what happens. We notice that we're centered once we're centered and then we're like oh wow I was really present there you know and so it is cool because I have this mantra that I repeat for myself and part of it includes being present you know because I am a multi-passionate person I have a lot of ideas I have a lot of downloads coming in I have a lot of passion and excitement I get excited about a lot of things right I have a lot of joy in my life which is a good thing but it also can leave me preoccupied <laughs> <laughs> because I'm thinking about all the things. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. I got to write that down. And my kids are like, mom, play the game, you know? <laughs> and so it's really, it's really good for me to kind of remind myself to stay present, you know? And that's the thing that I think a lot of people don't realize with doing this work either is that staying centered is not natural for human beings. Mm -hmm. Like it is not our automatic response because there's talk about overstimulation and talk about over... I guess overstimulation is really the best way to say it, but like overwhelm in our world. You know, there's so much, we have so many shiny objects, so much we have access to, so many things we have to do that distract us from that. And so many of us just being centered is not even close to automatic unless you decide to live in a monastery or an ashram. Right. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um how do you find that you respond, other than the people pleasing thing, how do you find that you respond when people, I guess, distract you or situations distract you from your centeredness? Like, how do you bring yourself back other than those little things, like even just the cue in your mind to realize you're not centered? Right. Hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. I mean, one example that's coming to mind is my phone is a distraction and it'll be because of excitement a lot of times. Like if a friend is texting me and I'm like, like grabbing my phone and like not paying attention, you know, like walking my dog and, and texting and like just not even present. Um, let me think, how do I recognize it? It's, it's strange because even if I'm excited it's like, I, I start to feel almost anxious. Like I feel kind of like a tightness in my chest. Like this, this isn't right. I'm losing myself. Um, mm. I'm, I'm not really here right now. And, and then my mind just starts to get really foggy and I'm just like, Oh, like I, I just feel all over the place. And, and I guess the overwhelm too. Um, and I definitely get away from any type of technology, like when I notice that, if I can, I like will leave my phone in another room and just sit or again, go in nature. Um, 
definitely paying attention to my senses. Like, again, I'll take like slow, deep breaths, um, you know, just like grab something in my hand and just mm -hmm. feel what it feels like. Um, yeah. Yeah, I always share. I always share the five by five technique to help people ground. I'm grabbing a crystal now. See what you did to me. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I always do that where, you know, look around you, name five things you can see, five things you can touch, five things you can hear or something like that, just to ground you. And the more senses that you do in that exercise, the more grounded you'll become. But that's funny because it's exactly what I was going to say about how I know when I'm not centered, I start to feel either anxious or guilty or yeah. restless right? And so the guilt comes up because I'm like, I feel badly that I'm not fully present. Right. You know what I mean? And so yeah. that'll, but I, don't, I haven't even recognized it consciously yet, you know, mm -hmm. but then it'll come up and I'm like, why am I feeling guilty? You know? And then I can realize, oh, like I'm not really fully invested in this experience. And let's be real friends. You're not going to necessarily be present all day, every day. Right. But the goal is to say you're at 20%, get to 21%, get to 22%. You know, you can pick whatever increments feel good. So Jenna has a question. How do I know when I feel centered and when I don't? Is being centered and being present synonymous? Mm, that's a good question. I don't think they're the same. Yeah, like I'm I'm feeling like they're close. Yeah. Not exactly the same. Like centered kind of just feels to me like a more like embodied experience yeah. um again like being being your authentic self being aligned um that's a great question that's when like for me that's when I describe it as it feels like all my cells are vibrating yes, yes. so that's the only way I can just I really don't know how else to describe it because like it literally feels like every single cell within my body is like vibrating I just feel it's not numb it's almost like an analgesic Honestly, like it almost is like a pain reliever that for me, when I'm in that centered state, I am in full alignment, exactly the word you used. I am in full alignment with my higher self and spirit. And I have so much clarity. I'm not indecisive and, um, and I'm confident. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so that's how I feel about centered and present is more that I'm fully invested and focused on multiple layers, like emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically, in whatever, just like the senses we were talking about in whatever activity I'm in. How does that feel? Does that feel accurate, Vienna? Yes, it does. And yeah, for me, like when I'm, I know I'm centered, um, like I can feel like tingling in my palms yes. and my heart center and even like my spine and my third eye, like I just, I, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain with words. Um, well, mm. one of the things Jenna, I can tell you is that when you're crying, you're centered because when she's in the Akashic records, she always tears come. She just starts to cry. It'll just like bust out yes. when she gets a confirmation of something. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's the other thing too, is you can always ask spirit or ask the universe to verify for you, to show you a sign when you're centered. You can also ask for that and they will show you, they'll work with you, you know, which is beautiful. We're co-creating together. Mm, yes. Yeah. So that's so cool. So mm. I know one of the things that you work with a lot is law of attraction, mm -hmm. right? Yes. yes. Can you explain a little bit about what that is for people who don't know? Sure. So um, the law of attraction bas basically states that what you think, what you feel, like the vibration, the frequency that you are currently at is what you are going to attract in your life. So just quick example, it gets deeper than this, obviously, but if you're thinking positive thoughts, if you're thinking happy, joyful thoughts, you're going to attract things in your life that bring you joy. If you're constantly thinking negative thoughts and angry and frustrated and, and, in that frequency, this like lower vibe, then you're going to continue to attract things into your life that align with that frequency. Yeah, no. And, and that's, and that's why I think it fits so beautifully in with the centeredness, right? Because we have, the reason I asked you that question after is because we have control over being centered more often as we have awareness of and manage our thoughts, our feelings, our sensations, right? Mm -hmm. 
So, so how do people adequately do that? Right? Like, because I remember, I remember when I, again, when I first started this path and people told me to think positive and positive things would come. And I was like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I get it. I was like, that's a bunch of BS. Like I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for that. And of course it was really about me being in resistance, me being defensive, too ruled by my ego, you know, at the time. And I had to learn, you know, and as I learned and I practiced over time, and don't get me wrong, there's still times that I fall into that and I have to remind myself, don't we all? But, um, you know, it's like, I tell, I tell my clients all the time, listen to spiritual stuff on loop or listen to positive podcasts or positive thinking or mindset coaches or any of that on loop, because you're just retraining your brain. The reason that you balk at that suggestion is because you've actually become reliant on and safe within the negativity. We actually on this planet connect so much to other people based on negativity. We're bitching about other people together. We're talking about, oh my gosh, can you believe what just happened? Oh my gosh, did you see her hair today? You know, like we talk about that stuff. And then unfortunately our brains start to associate negativity with connection. Right. It's so scary. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So what are your thoughts on like somebody who's kind of starting this practice and feeling like, oh, this feels like a daunting task and I don't know how I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, So one, one idea, it takes like a little bit of dedication, of course, but yeah, is just to start noticing your thoughts and how you're talking to yourself, um, your self-talk and you can carry around a little notepad with you and maybe tally off like how many times that day did you say something bad about yourself? Did you call yourself an idiot? Did you like, you know, like I like to start with towards yourself first because it always starts with you. If you start loving yourself more then it's naturally going to flow out to other people. So I always start with the self. Um, So it's good to get a tally. And then at the end of the day, when you have like, you know, 57 you're like oh shit (laughs) it's time to like make a change because I'm bullying myself um you know so the first thing to do is just notice um without judgment if possible and then start to make changes from there and the more you notice the better the more aware you're going to be and the better you're going to be at just telling yourself to stop you know or correcting yourself when you say something negative yeah, I love that too, because what I'll do is I'll take your exercise, I'll add a step to it, which is like, you do that exercise, you have this awareness now, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Now you have an awareness and you've started to observe yourself without judgment, right? And now you can look at these statements, pick the one that is the most activating for you. Like you're like, whoo, that one's rough, mm-hmm. you know, pick that one. And then ask yourself, you can even ask around the whole list if you want, but I think it's going to be more effective with what Vienna's talking about if you do one by one. Um, ask yourself, like, does this support the life I'm trying to create? Mm. Does this support the person that I'm becoming? Right? Because there's your answer right there. And honestly, that question alone can completely turn it around for you. Yes. You absolutely. know what I mean? Like you might not even need to do more work, but you may also need to be able to create other affirmations around it or new belief systems. And then just repeat one at a time. If you t- try to take it all, it all on at once, it's going to be very frustrating for you. Yes. For sure. Right. And you're going to feel defeated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, the other thing I tell people too is, um, especially first thing in the morning when you wake up, just seeing what your first thoughts are of the day. Mm. Is it like, oh, I don't want to get up. I hate this job. Because those first thoughts really can set up the rest of your day. Um, You know, and while you're not, you know, busy running around doing a bunch of things, like since you're just in bed anyway, Mm -hmm. maybe that's when you decide, you know what? Today's another day. Like I have the opportunity to make it a great day something as simple as that. Well, and that's the piece, right? Is like that we have control over it. We're not victims of our mood or we're not victims of our thoughts. We're not victims of circumstances. It's funny that you say that because that's something that that I've been really focused on 
-hmm. over the past week or so, because I've had a lot of pain since I'm getting surgery next week. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of pain. And so sometimes I'll wake up and I'll just be like, oh, and I do not get out of bed until I shift it. I do not. I refuse yeah. because I'm that level of committed. And I know I can shift it quickly because I've been doing this work for a while too. But like I lay there, I put my hands and then you know what I ask myself every single time? What is it today that I'm really excited about doing? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The first thing that came up to my mind this morning was this, was going live with you. I was so excited about it. I was like, <laughs> I get to be with Vienna for an ad. This is so fun. Like and that. so, um, but yeah, think about like what, what is it that makes me feel excited today? Or what is it that I can do that's exciting today, right? And then you've set like this tentative goal for yourself. You've given yourself something to look forward to. And then the other thing I do is as soon as I put my feet on the floor, that's when I start my gratitude, you know? And I'm just like, oh, I'm so grateful I can walk to the bathroom. I'm so grateful I can wash my hands. I'm so great, you know, all of that. Um, and so, but that's only if I, you know, if it's a really rough morning and then I just kind of string them together, but you're so right. The, one of the top, I think it's, yeah. One of the top tasks for the most successful people is making your bed every morning. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't make my bed every morning. My, <laughs> my oldest daughter does. And I'm like, you're going to be president because <laughs> you're making your bed every morning. And I'm like, screw it. I make my bed before I go to bed. But yeah, just like starting your day off with either listening to your body or your intuition, like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. or asking yourself what excites you, or just starting to shift your thoughts, like Vianna said, like be aware of what's coming up. And sometimes if it's like repetitive and it's the same crappy stuff that keeps coming forward, you could get out your journal and start to dive into it and excavate it a little bit. But it doesn't always require that. Sometimes it's simply... Nope. I'm not available for this. Making a different decision. Right. I agree. Yes. Journaling is huge. My favorite thing. So Layla's saying, this is amazing. I'll try it tomorrow morning. Sherry says, I love this. Oh. Jenna says, oh my God, Vienna, that's a hundred percent. What I need to do is change my negative ego thoughts. Mm. Oh, thank you, ladies. I can't <laughs> she see says, comments. Laura, so. can I intertwine Vienna's thought rewiring with EFT? A hundred and eighty percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great yes. idea. That's a brilliant idea. You can put them together. So, so that's one way that honestly, that's all I need to do is to ask what's going to get me excited. And then I'm literally automatically excited because it doesn't take much to get me excited. And then I'm like, oh, I can't wait. Like and that. so then I'm good. But like for you, what do you do to kind of get to that feeling of excitement? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Hmm. I, I love that question, by the way, I'm going to start doing that. Cause I, I don't always ask, what am I going to be excited about? Yeah. Um, I definitely, I always start my morning with gratitude too. Like, mm -hmm. thank you for another day. Um, you know, I do the same thing. Thank you for the ability to get out of bed and walk myself to the bathroom, um, mm -hmm. to walk my dog, things like that. Um, hmm. I, I have to say dancing again. Yeah. Gets me, it's like my favorite thing. It gets me so excited. Like just like dancing like a little kid, like to Britney Spears, basically. Like just like like <laughs> something like that. Like and just like going nuts. Like that's what gets me into the excited mood. Good. Like, See, I love that. And and it's simple. Like it's your body. You have it with you all the time. Like yeah. you can use it. Even if you're in the middle of the grocery store, although people might stare at you. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's so cool that, it, and I think it's important. Those of you who are here live or on the replay, let us know what gets you excited. This is important for you, not for us. Start to claim what is it that gets you excited? Because not only do I want other people to have ideas because everybody's different and we all have different things that get us excited, but it's good for you to have awareness and to claim that for yourself so that you can remember it. Because even for me, you know, when I wasn't feeling great last week, I got into this funk and I was just like, ugh, I feel like crap, you know? And I was talking to my husband about it and he was just like, well, why don't you just go chant? Chanting always brings you out of it. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> funny how sometimes we can get into that space and, and truly forget. Like for you even, I'm sure you're not always thinking about dancing and choosing that to get excited, right? right. 
And so sometimes it's just reminding ourselves. And so you can do that by they have mindfulness bell apps where you know you can have mindfulness bell goes off. I don't use that. I just use the reminders in my phone if I need them. And they'll just go off throughout the day with affirmations or reminders to do this or that, or just do a check-in to see like, what is my body saying? What am I saying? Have I gotten lost in the sauce? And basically I'm you know, pleasing everybody or doing everything for somebody else or getting stuck in a rut you know, and allow yourself to, to shift it in that moment. You have multiple, every moment is a moment to shift mm. or your mindset or your approach. Right. One other thing I remembered that gets me excited is honestly just like fantasizing about the future, um, you know, and sometimes about sex too. But yeah. <laughs> as soon as I said fantasizing, I'm like, oh, they're going to think it's sexual. And maybe sometimes <laughs> well, it, it can be. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> so, um, but just really like pure, like fantasy and fun and imagination. But this is all, this also has to do with manifesting and law of attraction, but it's just like fun to me. Like I used to do this when I was a little kid too, about like, you know, my dream job as an astronaut, which still might happen. I'm not sure. Um, and today I'll, you know, um, fantasize about my dream home and like having like this beautiful built-in pool with a waterfall and like picturing my future children running around just like it's just like a fun like mm. fantasy that you would have if when you were a little kid like sharing this stuff with your friends about like what you want to be when you grow up like mm. things like that excite me yeah I love that so much and it's you basically saying to the universe like I have access to infinite possibility. There's so many opportunities available to me when you do that, you know, which the universe responds to that. Angie's so sweet. She said, I get excited at the wonder of what my amazing daughter will do today. I remind myself during the day to look at life through her young eyes and see the beauty she sees. Oh, I love that. So I love that so much because it's so true, right? We need to have that perspective of looking at things with wonder and awe because when we have that perspective, everything's exciting. Like I remember when I first had, when I had my first child and she's almost 14 now, but she was like nine months or something. She would get so excited when the birds came on our back porch and she would be mesmerized with them. And I just remember thinking like, oh, it's so beautiful that the, it's it's a simplicity and actually a grounding that little kids bring to us and that animals bring to us you know like being able to like when I'm outside and my dog sees a butterfly she is she is chasing that butterfly she is so pumped she is so excited and it's just it's so cute to be brought back to the simplicity and realize how much excitement and wonder we can find within that that we can literally find wonder and excitement in anything no matter what it is and I remember saying that with before I got married to my husband too, I was just like, there's so many reasons he's the one, but I was like, I know he is because we can have fun at an ATM. We can have fun, you know, scrubbing the toilet together. Like we make everything fun. We find the fun in everything, you know? And so I think it's true. Like you have to, to look for it. That's where the commitment to yourself comes in. And it's so self-loving to make these choices. You know, Layla says, I can get excited just by looking at a squirrel in a tree. I, I love that you were right on point with that as we were talking about that. And then there's my funny horse and the full following. <laughs> that's so cute. Exactly. That's what we need to find our excitement in. Honestly, when you can find your excitement in the little things or in the day-to-day -day things or the simple things, mm -hmm. um, you know that you're, you're an excitement master. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I'm just getting reminded of so many things, even just like walking through town, you know, like through like a main street and like going into little shops and just seeing things that resonate and mm. synchronicities coming, of course. And yeah. like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite thing ever is synchronicities and like mm -hmm. seeing like triple numbers, like three, 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 four, four, four. I'm like, oh, hi guys. Like, even though I know you're here all the time, like, thank you. And, oh my gosh. Yeah. So. I love yeah. that so much. One of my team members was messaging me earlier and um, she sent the message at 12, 12. Then I sent her a message back and it was one 11. And then she sent me a back a message back. And it was, uh, I don't even remember what time. Oh, cause she's, uh, she's in a different time zone than I am. So mm -hmm. she sent it to me at 12, 22. And so we were just like, oh, the numbers, we were getting so excited. I love it. Yes. 
Angie says, if they can make you laugh, they're the one. Yeah. And then Sherry says, that's what I get excited about meeting my own Mr. Mazada. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Maybe I'll have Dino hook you up, Sherry. He can hook you up with somebody. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so what's cool about all of these things that we're talking about, the law of attraction, being centered, getting excited, returning to the core, being present. When you make a commitment to doing these things and you take responsibility for the fact that, yeah, it's on you to make these choices, to decide clearly. It's funny this is coming up too because I was behind on my you are a badass daily tear off calendar. So I was reading a bunch of them this morning and that's what they were saying. It was, um, you know, make a decision and just, just do it. Right. And they actually defined the word decide. See, I shouldn't have thrown it away. Um, they actually defined the word decide. And I encourage you to look it up, look up the definition of the word decide because it's you being bold with yourself, right? It's like you're reparenting yourself. You're making a decision that's in your highest good. There's nothing more loving than that. Your system knows that you're reliable and you can that it can rely on you because you're making decisions that's in your highest good. And so what does that lead to? You feeling so empowered. Yes. You feeling like a boss. Mm -hmm. Jenna says, Vienna, not to backtrack. How would you rewire the thoughts I will get overwhelmed at work. My first thoughts in the morning and I will be looked at as not good enough. My second most constant thought regarding changing my current work-life balance for my highest good. I have my own ideas, but wanted to know if you had any that resonated with you or Laura, if you have any chance. Well, I can talk to you about chance, honey. But yeah, so she's wondering. So it's, I will get overwhelmed at work and I will be looked at as not good enough. What are your thoughts on that? Mm hmm Um, hmm. few different things just like being able to say I trust that I will handle it mm -hmm. you know like I, I I trust that my mind body and spirit will know what to do when comes up when I something that. comes up um I can allow myself to breathe in between tasks today I don't have to do everything all at once. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And, oh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. What were you gonna oh. say? I mean, I was just going to say you, you could also kind of just shift into this actually doesn't feel right to me. I was just about to say you could shift into gratitude. Like, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful that I have a job and, and things like that, but you don't always have to force yourself to be grateful. Right. You know, like, um, I don't know, you know, where you're at at this job, but if this isn't the job for you, you don't have to stay and keep torturing yourself, you know, but, um, but anyway, back to the feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. Just like, I trust myself that I will get the job done. Mm -hmm. And also, I think another good one there too, is something like I choose to, I choose to love myself through this gracefully. Yes. I love you know what I mean? Cause I think that what, unfortunately we have thoughts like that, like we beat ourselves up and we question ourselves and we doubt ourselves and, you know, and so I think it's, I, I, or request assistance from the Akash or from spirit and just say, cause you can always ask for help and just be like, listen, I'm, I would be so grateful for to, to really palpably feel the level of love and ease that's flowing through my field because mm -hmm. you know it's there. Even if you're not feeling it, you know it's there. And so you're just asking for it to become more obvious, you know, more present for you. And it's interesting because your other one, Jenna, I will be looked at as not good enough. That one, mm -hmm. I want you to use a good old Byron Katie to turn around, which is like, you ask the four questions. Is it true that you're not good enough? Is it a hundred percent true? Or is it a hundred percent true that you're looked at as not good enough? How mm -hmm. would you feel without the thought? And who would you be if that thought did not exist? Right. And then you can do the turnaround at the end, which is instead of, I will be looked at as not good enough. How about I am looking at myself as not good enough? Cause that's really what it is. Yes. And so it's in that moment, shifting into something that makes you feel competent. It could be making coffee. It could be making breakfast. It could be, you know, cleaning your dresser. You know, it, it's just, 
being able to shift into something that makes you feel confident because then you're going to feel or competent, I should say, because then you're going to feel more confident, right? Um, and it's going to be a ripple effect after that too. So that's the other piece. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you have any other thoughts on that one, Vienna? Yeah, I mean, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, well, she, you know, I forgot who is, who is this? Jenna. Jenna. Jenna, sorry, I can't see any of the Facebook stuff. That's okay, I'm on it. <laughs> So, you know, Jenna, are you, you know, um, are you the one that doesn't think you're good enough and you're just projecting that onto other people, yep. you know? So if you tell yourself that you are good enough enough times, you're going to believe it and you're not going to give a shit what anybody thinks. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, my other strategy, you know, cause that's going to take time. So my other strategy for when you're afraid of what people think um, is it's none of my business what they think. Mm -hmm. I'm, not even gonna, I'm not even gonna waste my time thinking about it because it's none of my business. I'm never gonna find out unless they say it out loud. I'm not a mind reader, so it's none of my business. Well, and I would also say too, with your, you were talking about projection, which is exactly mm -hmm. what she's doing, right? You're also, yes, Alicia, you're here with us. Hi, you're live with us. So, um, the other thing I was thinking there is like, don't put words into other people's mouths. Like don't jump into their heads. That's not fair to them, right? And it disempowers them. Let them have their own thoughts. Let them make their own judgments about you if they wanna make their own judgments. But don't disempower them. Don't take that lesson away from them, right? Mm, Focus that. on your own lessons. Um, and Angie, Angie wrote back a beautiful statement here to Jenna. You're not running anyone else's race. You're only answering to yourself. You're good enough. You're worthy of focusing on your own race. We will never win anyone else's race and we will never change another's perception of us. Stay true to you. Love that. Mm -hmm. Sherry says, I'm presently so excited about eating right and taking care of my body, gaining momentum, restoring my energy and being able to move. Yes, I need to ask about this in the Akash as well, she says. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Love it. So my question is, are you also f following through with it, Sherry? <laughs> That would be my question. So yeah, so any other thoughts on um, on empowerment mm -hmm. that we haven't covered to really muster up that feeling? Because my personal feeling, and I've done posts and lives on this before about, I feel very strongly that we can't heal without empowerment. I really feel like empowerment is that momentum that Sherry's talking about, you know? So um, what are your thoughts on that? Mm. Well, I mean, having support from others is fantastic, you know, to help you empower yourself, like, especially from other women. Um, but some things, just some things to remember, especially for us spiritual folks, is that, like, how empowering is it to know that we are divine? Like, we are connected with the divine constantly there's there's never we are never apart from them we are never alone they are always with us even if we can't see or hear or feel them even if we're in a fog and we think you know why have you abandoned me my life sucks like they are always always here mm -hmm. so not only do you have that constant support of this like abundant marvelous love that like us humans cannot even comprehend you are also created from the divine you are a divine being you are you are a conscious creator like you're a human being and we can look at that spiritually as well but but even if we even if we weren't spiritual like look at what human beings have done look at what we've created in this world look at our technology like look at what our ancestors have done for us so that like i can go put a load of laundry in the wash while i go meditate and work on myself like we are so like constantly evolving and we're getting so far and like side note we could choose to look at all the negative things in the world which like yes there are a lot of it but just to know what human beings are capable of like our potential is so empowering that is so i can literally feel the energy and the empowerment from you as you're talking about that i'm just like oh i'm drinking it in i love it <laughs> yeah and you know you use the word create a couple times mm. exactly you know and a lot of people don't understand how are we conscious creators how do we create think about it first of all you are all creations and creating right think about it 
you just came, you developed out of cells, cells that met. That's all they were, were these little cells. And then they multiplied, multiplied, multiplied and created this incredibly complex biological system that is you, right? That's, that's us in physiological form, not to mention the spiritual part that Vienna was talking about, right? And so if we can create humans, I have created three humans yes. within my body. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can create human beings, <laughs> like, I can create anything. It's absolutely mm -hmm. magical. Mm -hmm. My little sister just gave birth for the first time. So exciting. Congratulations. Just like, oh my gosh, like you've always been my little sister and now you have a human. You created this human with all the organs and all the systems and everything's working. And it's absolutely fascinating. It really is mm -hmm. fascinating. And that is just like the basic form of creation. But that's another really good question to add to your toolbox, which is what can I create right now? Mm, love that. You can create brownies. <laughs> if you want to create yes. brownies, yes. you can create an experience. You can create a loving connection with someone. Even if it's just sending a text and being like, hey, I was thinking of you, right? You have the opportunity in every moment to create. How freaking empowering is that? Yes. Even if it's so funny because somebody told me this a while ago and I didn't believe it when they were like, you know, yeah, you can even go live when you're in a shitty mood and it doesn't matter because if your vibration is, if you're aligned with your truth, it doesn't matter if you're in a crappy mood or you don't feel well or whatever, the message is going to get across. And it's so true. Mm -hmm. It's so true. You don't have to wait until you are like this happy go lucky human to create. Right? right. You get to just decide, you know what, I'm going to share something today and I might not share it as funky as I usually share it, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to share it because it feels like my truth, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really important. And I, I think that's where a lot of people run into roadblocks because they feel they interpret that as resistance or they interpret it as it's not aligned. How do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. I love that so much. I'm so glad you're bringing that up because it's, I mean, it makes so much sense why, you know, people would think that. Cause like, if it, if I don't feel good that I'm not aligned, but mm -hmm. sometimes we're not aware what plans and what timing the universe has. And even like our spirit has for us. And maybe we were in a bad mood that day, for example, like you said, you know, going live anyway, even though I'm in a bad mood, right. Someone probably needed to hear what you have to say somebody else is going through what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And if your goal is to, you know, help others and raise the consciousness of the world, boom, you just achieved your goal by doing that, even if you felt crappy. And you're showing up authentically. <laughs> <laughs> it just oh my gosh, I have so many 80s dances I wanna bust out right now. Um, but yeah, that's, that's exactly right, is that, Oh, you get, you get to make those choices and I'm all giggly now. I know. Right. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Yeah. Oh, but see, yeah, it's so beautiful too, because it's like, you're forgiving yourself right in the moment and realizing like, no, I don't have to be mad at myself. Cause I'm not in the best space or I don't have to be, you know, and, and that you're showing up authentically. Other people do not care whether you spell things right. Other people do not care whether you stumble over your words or you're kind of low energy, because if they needed to hear that message and they were drawn to whatever it was you're sharing, it is invaluable. They could care less. They see through all of that. They don't even see any of it because they're just so grateful for the message. Alicia says, I'm creating so many things in my life. I've tuned out. I've tuned out the world and have been listening. New house, new career, new life. Yay. Hey. We're all oh, celebrating with you, honey. And hi, Robin. Thanks for being here. Yes, Angie, we have happy inner children. She said, we have happy inner children. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Yes. Oh, isn't that the best? That feels so good. Thank you, honey. Sherry, yes, because it's needed. Continue going live. I love being in this space. It's so funny. And there's honestly, I could go live so much more often. I really could. You know, I just, I get in my head about it sometimes. I, I don't, I'm so comfortable with going live. Like it doesn't bother me at all, but I do sometimes feel like I can't go live when I am like, 
<laughs> you know, still that comes up every once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also just mainly tuning into my energy, honestly, and being mm -hmm. able to think forward is like, okay, like I want to share this energy. Is my cup overflowing? And if it's not overflowing, but it's just full, then I don't go live. Mm -hmm. And that's important for anybody who's giving in any way. Right. right. You know, Vienna was talking about people pleasing earlier. So before you are, or, or before you go to somebody's house or you go to reach out to somebody, blah, 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 just tune in, you know, are you overflowing or are you just kind of right there with your cup full? Right. Because you don't that. want people scooping out of the cup. You want them scooping out of the saucer. That's what I always say. Oh, I love that. I'm going to use that. Yeah. Use it. I love it. I'm just like, no, you can't scoop out of the cup. You got to scoop out of the saucer. <laughs> So anyway, you actually have a really beautiful opportunity coming up, Vienna, don't you? It's called Align, which is a law of attraction course. Yes. Can you share a little bit about what that is? Sure. So um, it's funny because I originally designed it as a law of attraction course, which it is. We're going to, it's, you know, we're going to be meeting with women as a group weekly for six weeks. Um, we're going to be meeting live on zoom and we're going to just like rock out and manifest together and learn skills about law of attraction. Um, but I also decided we're going to incorporate some movement in there just to like get our vibration higher and just like be together as women in a community. Um, because there's been so many shame towards women with, with dancing even and with their bodies. So like, I just want to free all that like gunk up. Like I've, so, and movement, like movement can cl uh, clear blocks and even trauma in the body. Um, so anything, you know, I'm just like, let's get it all out of the way. Let's clear all the blocks so that we can be as aligned as possible with our, our authentic selves and like come into our power and just like learn to naturally attract the life we want without even trying. That's the best, isn't it? Yeah. That's just like what Alicia was talking about. Like just being able to put yourself in a state where you're making choices every single day or even multiple times a day to reorient to who you want to become, teaching you how to do that, but also holding you accountable. It's almost like you're going to be training people to do that in right. this program so that when they're done, they can just continue that momentum, you know, yes. which is so beautiful because uh, the world needs it. I mean, it's so... It, more people love, don't love themselves than love themselves <laughs> just in terms of what we're seeing on the planet, you know? And so being able to, to learn how to do that and really align it with who you are and your unique energetic blueprint and, and what you desire and where you've come from and how you tick, you know, being able to be guided that way is just yeah, exciting yeah. and empowering and nurturing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna learn a bunch of skills, like more about what law of attraction is. Um, I'm having a friend of mine who does EMDR, like she's gonna be a guest speaker and, and give us some tools with that. We're gonna do guided meditations. Like it's just, I'm so excited for it. It's a very yummy space, it really is. Aww. Can you tell people what EMDR means for those who, don't, who do not know? It's such a fantastic, effective therapeutic approach. So just yeah. let people know what that is. Sure, so I always wanna make sure I pronounce the words right. It is. It stands for eye movement desensitization. Hold on, what's the R stand for? See, I, I never know. What is it? Sorry. Reprocessing is what. Yes, reprocessing. Are. I always think it's um. Yeah. My movement desensitization response is what I always say, but it's oh, reprocessing. Okay. Yes, yes, I know I always screw that up too. But go yeah, ahead. It's too many long words. Um, but anyway, so it basically like so, I've never done it, but I am going to my friend next week so she can do it on me, which I'm oh, super cool. excited for. Um, but basically it really just helps to, um, it helps your brain to reprocess mm -hmm. anything that's traumatic in your past. Yeah. So it, it literally can help people with PTSD, like very intense symptoms, you know, re literally reliving their past trauma and having flashbacks and, and things like that. But you don't have to have full blown PTSD to, for it to work. You know, like we all have our own traumas that have 
led us to develop negative belief systems. So it's supposed to help with all of that. And, and I think it's great because, especially for this program, because our traumas, some people forget their traumas also, yeah. and our traumas lead us to have these unconscious belief systems that we can't shake because we like can't get to them on by ourselves. Right. So, um, so yeah, so that reprocessing of the brain, even what we're not aware of, um, I think is so helpful. So I'm excited. yeah, it's really cool because they, they really call up that that memory briefly, not for a long time, but they call it that memory so that you get the feeling activated within you. And then while it's activated and the memory is activated, you follow a series of eye movements and a pattern to rewire the pattern in your brain to disconnect that emotional feeling from the memory itself so that the memory still exists, but it's no longer attached to that traumatic emotion, mm -hmm. which is so cool. And honestly, tapping is incorporated into EMDR all the time. It's a part of it. Um, and so tapping does a very similar thing, which is you're remapping and you're rewiring your nervous system as you are calling forward what it is you want to release and then setting in those belief systems that are in alignment with who you want to become. Um, never heard of it before, said Layla. Yeah, I wonder if they have it. I think, are you, you're in Denmark, aren't you, Layla? I wonder if they do it over there. I'm sure they do. Yeah, we even carry ancestral trauma, says Alicia. Oh, I know. Welcome to my yeah. world. That's my absolute favorite healing modality is ancestral <laughs> healing. It makes me so happy. In fact, Alicia, have you ever gotten the book, um, The Ancestors Within? That's what I'm reading right now. It's so good. I was invited to write the second book and I really want to do it, but um, I'm getting surgery. So the timing is <laughs> the timing. It's not right. But, um, I just, I, I could literally read about and spend time in ancestral healing all day, every day. I love it so much. So how can people get more information about the course and connect with you, Vienna? Um, so I, I use Instagram the most yeah. I'd like to get more into Facebook maybe, but, um, my Instagram is at the period spiritual therapist. So that's my Instagram. And I have, the link, yeah, I have the link in my bio, um, for the program on Instagram, which just brings you to my website. Cool. She has such a fancy website too. I do. I'm, you do. I'm very, very grateful for my web designer. She is amazing. You're and just like the trendiest. You're just so much trendier than I am. Um, <laughs> Angie says, this is also amazing. Alicia says, no, but I will. Okay, cool with that book. Jenna says, amazing. All right, friends. So mm -hmm. definitely, yeah, follow Vienna on Instagram. She's just such a loving, wonderful soul. And we both have golden retrievers, which really makes us good people. So yeah. um, <laughs> I agree. anyway, we are so grateful for all of you guys for being here today and just chatting with us so openly and asking your questions and connecting. Um, it really helps us make this a more dynamic discussion too, and really get specific, you know, about what's coming up for you so that everybody can learn even more than what we brought forward. So thank you for being here. We love you all so much. And we're going to do this again soon. We talked about doing it again. We might even invite somebody else to join us. So, um, so we will see you soon. Definitely get in touch with Vienna about her course called Align. So um, you guys can be aligned, centered, excited, and empowered. And we'll see you so soon. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Bye.